Hi and welcome back. So you may remember I had my normal three monthly blood test taken here on the island where I live at the moment. They couldn't do all the tests. So a couple of weeks ago, we headed off the big island to get the rest of the tests done. Those results are now back. Let's jump in and take a look at the update. So as this is just an update, I'm not going to go through the whole list of the supplements that I was taking at the time of this. They're exactly the same as they were about uh, a week before I had um, this particular test. And so let's move straight on to my lipid profile. Uh, anything I had tested at the larger hospital um, or things that were out of range but are now in range, I've highlighted in yellow. And those are the only things I'm going to cover in this particular test. So total cholesterol you can see is high. That's because my LDL is 167, which is also high. But you'll know if you follow the channel, the reasons I don't hold much store in LDL as a single marker. My HDL, a, which I, I, had my, I had my whole um, lipid profile done again. My HDL is 54.7, so well within the reference range. My triglycerides, which were extremely high. Uh, if you remember, my wife's auntie arrived um, and announced from America to the Philippines that there was a big party, um, which I took part in. And I'd forgotten I already had my blood test booked for, I think, the day after the party or the day after the day after the party. So that's the reason a lot of these were, were out of range. Um, so my triglycerides are now 82.3, which is well below the 150 of the maximum uh, maximum with reference range. VLDL cholesterol. 16.4 um, and the upper range for that is 40 so again happy with that my total cholesterol hdl ratio 4.4 and that should be between three and five so i'm happy with that my ldl hdl ratio even though my ldl is high and is always high the ratio of ldl to hdl is 3.14 and that should be between 1.5 and 3.5 so i'm happy with all of the uh of the lipid profile scores I got when I got my blood tested again. Let's move on to my blood sugar score. You can see it is six, so it's still within what's classed as the increased increased risk range. That said, the, the hospital here on the island where I am said that anything below 6.5 is okay, but I'm gonna stick with the old scoring system. Remember that A1C kind of tests back for the last three months. I've only been up to one gram of metformin a day, uh, for about two or three weeks. So I'm not expecting that to have been shown in this particular result. The next time I get my blood tested, which is in about two months, um, I'll have been taking a gram a day of metformin. I'm hoping it's going to drop down again somewhere in this 5.5 range. My average blood glucose is 126. That's in the fear control. And again, I'm hoping after another two months of metformin, a gram a day, it's going to drop down into the excellent control, which is where it was before, which is the 111. So that's it for my blood sugar. Let's move on to my liver profile. You can see here that the majority of markers were all tested again because they do more comprehensive testing on the big island. All the markers there, bar one, are in reference range. The one that's not within reference range is my globulin. That's high, that said, 3.5, and the reference range is 2.3. 3.4 is only just slightly high, which is not too worrying. That said, if you look back here as far back as August of 2021, when I was in the Middle East, that always came back as being low. So for wh whatever reason, it was low in the Middle East. Now that I'm in the Philippines, it seems to have jumped up slightly high. Um, one of the reasons this number could be either high or low is to do with hydration. Which is strange because I don't think I'm any more dehydrated or I'm more hydrated, overly um, hydrated here in the Philippines. So that's something I'll keep my eye on in the future. Uh, and then in the larger hospital where I went for the update test, you can see they now also include three markers that I've never had tested before. Phosphorus, LDH and GGT. Not too sure exactly what they are. Uh, they're all within range, so I'm not too worried about what they are until they drop um, out of range for some reason. So that's it for my liver profile. So let's move on to my renal profile. Apart from one, all of these are well within reference range, so I'm happy with that. Now, my bun, my blood urea nitrogen, and my creatinine serum ratio, uh, the reference range is 9.1 to 23.1, and mine is 
4.1. But my burn score is within reference range, which is 7 to 25 or 7 to 22.6. And my creatinine is also well within reference range, 0 0.83, and that can be between 0 0.6 and 1.1. But for some reason, although both separate markers are within reference range, the ratio is out. And when you look at the reason for that, it talks about mild kidney damage and maybe dehydration. But if you think back to my last blood test, my EGF, EGFR score, that has usually got me in the mild decrease with regard to um, uh, my kidney function, that jumped up well into the normal range. So I'm not too sure why um, the bun and creatinine ratio is high when both individual markers and my EGFR score are normal. I'd be interested to see if someone knows or if they've got any ideas in the comment section of the YouTube video. So moving on, let's take a look at my vitamin D. You can see here that it shot up from normally like 60 in the 70s, sometimes in the 80s, to 98.3, which is it's strange. Sufficient is 30 to 80, and toxic is over 100. So what's between 80 and 100? I'm not too sure how they work out that scoring system. So I'm not yet toxic, um, and you have to be taking vitamin D in the toxic range for quite a long time for it to affect you negatively. Um, I'm not eating foods that contain more vitamin D, but it may be that now that I'm in the Philippines, we are spending more time out in the sun, um, visiting the beach a lot more because it's not as hot here as it is in the Middle East uh, on the weekends with the kids because my daughter especially loves to swim. Um, I'm also, as you know, rucking, which is running and walking two times or twice a week. So it may be that. So what I'm going to do or what I've already started doing is I used to take 5,000 international units of vitamin D every day and then 10,000 on a Monday and Wednesday. I've cut that down now. I'm just taking 5,000 a day. So we'll see what happens in um, three months or two and a half months when I take the, the, the neck blood test to see if this has dropped um, or if it's gone over the 100. I might need to start reconsidering taking uh, vitamin D every single day. We'll just have to wait and see how that goes. Vitamin B12, that's low, but it's well within the reference range. Uh, I think well, I know since I've arrived in the Philippines, it's a lot more difficult to get a hold of steak and beef. Um, so I've been relying more on chicken for my protein intake. That said, um, <clears throat> I found somewhere where I can get minced beef or ground beef. So instead of chicken nearly every night of the week and some beef, um, Filipino beef dishes, I'm going to start cooking as I did before my own burgers. So I'm probably going to be having chicken, chicken and beef burgers uh, during the week. So probably going to be cooking my own burgers two or maybe three nights a week. That should increase my vitamin B12 score. So moving on to my testosterone, you can see here it's 5.44. Uh, the reference range is 2.8 to 8. So 5.44 is more or less in the middle. So I'm happy with that. For some reason, whether I'm on this island or the large one, uh, I can't get my free testosterone checked. They did say it might be possible in Manila, but I'm not going to fly an hour every day uh, just for that test. So um, no problems with that. My iron, you can see here my iron is low. It's 8, and they reckon the reference range is between 9.5 to 19.9. Uh, I'm hoping the increase in beef uh, and also uh, eggs. I mean, I've managed to do because I normally put a fried egg on top. We'll bring that back up. We'll see in three months. And the other two iron markers are well within reference range. Let's move on to my amylase. You can see here 63, down from 84, uh, but still well within 28 to 100. Uh, I had my complete blood done again. So you can see here, all of them are within reference range. And the second one, where they wouldn't do the absolute scores here on the island, I've had those checked, and all of those are well within reference range, so I'm happy. Also on the Big Island, they did check my large unsustained or unstained cells, LUC. Uh, reference 0 to 0 0.4, mine came back at 0, so I'm happy with that. So moving on to my estradiol, you can see here 16.6. The reference range is between 0 and 40, so that's well under control now. I remember when I first had a check, it was 41.1. Um, so Halfway would be, would be 20. I think 16 is, is a good score. I'm happy with that. 
One thing they do also check as part of the blood tests on the Big Island is my PSA score. My PSA score came back as 1.72. Uh, and as long as it's between zero and four, it's uh, a lower risk of prostate cancer. So that's a, a welcome addition to the blood test. That's it for my, my, my three monthly blood test update. Well, I hope you found that interesting. I think much as they can be, my blood markers are now back on track. I'm looking to up my vitamin B12 and especially my iron levels. I'm hoping to do that with the introduction of more beef into my diet. And we'll find out in about two and a half months if that has worked. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.